Hi, we're going to, in this video, we're going to do another unknown interest rates example. Before I get to the example, because these are the harder problems, I want to make a comment that you're most likely to see uh, in a geometric annuity problem, one like we did in the standard example video. I just want to show you some of the harder problems in these videos, but again, you're not likely to see one like this. You're more likely to see these other pro standard examples. But anyway, let's get on with this harder example. So a 10-year annuity immediate with annual payments has an initial payment of seven. Each subsequent payment is 10% more than its preceding payment. It says the present value of the annuity is 70.49 using an annual effective interest rate of I, determine I. So let's Read the problem, try to get our timeline. We got a 10-year annuity immediate that I'm told the present value of is, of this annuity as an annuity immediate, the present value is going to be one period before the first payment. And so it's an annual payment annuity. First payment is seven. Next payment is, is increased by 10% and so forth. So this is what my timeline is going to look like. I've got uh, years on the timeline and the present value of this annuity immediate is 70.49 and those are the payments. Okay, I need more room. Let's move it up. Capture all the information. I is the annual effective interest rate that I seek. All right, so geometric annuity, three-step process to value it. Step one, VEP. So the VEP, I'm looking at this present value, that valuation date. The first payment of seven, I need to discount one period to get back to the valuation date. So I would do that by multiplying by V, or I'm going to go ahead and, and put it in terms of I, dividing by a one plus I. So the present value would be, the VEP expression would be a 7 divided by 1 plus I. 7 times 1.1 needs to be divided by 1 plus I squared to discount it back to the valuation date. I only need those two payments and the 10 terms. That I know that I have 10 terms. It's a 10 payment annuity. Step 1 is completed. Step 2 is to factor out the first term. And I'm going to do that. I'm also going to substitute in the 70.49 for the present value. So I get 70.49 is 7 divided by 1 plus i. And then what I get after I factored out the first term is the 1 plus 1.1 over 1 plus i and so forth. Again, I check myself by distributing the 7 divided by 1 plus i across the parentheses and making sure that I recover the original PV expression from step 1. Now, at this point, what I would normally do, I look at the uh, expression in red, and I decide, well, is that an A dot? Normally, I would say, is that an A double dot or is that an S? And I would do that by looking at the 1 over the 1 plus I, but I, I don't have a numeric value for that. And so I look at that, and I say, okay, well, now my question is, is what's in parentheses? Is that, you know, can I, can I, dist can I figure out whether that's bigger than 10 or less than 10? If it's less than 10, I'd use an A double dot. If it's bigger than 10, I would use an S. But I can't do that even because in order to figure out the magnitude of the number in parentheses, as far as bigger or less than 10, I would look at the coefficient, which is a 7 over 1 plus i, and that's not numeric either. So I'm, I'm stuck. I'm back to this point that I'm, I'm stuck. So in this situation, this is one of the trickier ones. In this situation, what I would do is I want to have a numeric value in front of what's in parentheses there. So I keep the 7 there, and I distribute the 1 over 1 plus i through the parentheses. So at this point, I got something that looks like this. Now, what I prefer to have in the parentheses is not the first term being a 1 over a 1 plus i, but the first term being a 1.1 a 1 .1 over 1 plus i. So like I had in the, in the, in the middle expression there, the, the parentheses, I got a 1 plus a 1.1 1 .1 over 1 plus i. So I'd, I'd like to have that first term to be the 1.1 1 .1 over 1 plus i. And I can do that by multiplying and dividing by a 1.1. 1 .1. So the coefficient then becomes a 7 divided by 1.1. And then what's in parentheses becomes a 1.1 1 .1 over 1 plus i. And then the next term I could actually write as a 1.1 1 .1 over 1 plus i that quantity squared, that quotient squared, and so forth. So again, check yourself by distributing the 7 divided by 1 plus, uh, the 7 divided by 1.1 across the parentheses and seeing that you recover the original PV equation from step one, and you will. So now the question is, well, what about this expression in the parentheses now the, that, that I have in red? Well, let's, let's 
consider that. Let's put that on a new page and let's just think about that for, for a second. Normally my step three, in my step three, after I factored out the first term, my step three would be well, what's left after you factor out the first term is going to look like a one plus, it's gonna be geometric, it's gonna look like a, a one plus an R and so forth for N terms. And then normally what I would do is I would look at the R value, that second term, and I would determine whether it's, try to determine whether it's less than one or greater than one. If it was less than one, I'm thinking of it as a V. And then the one plus V and so forth for N terms is the VEP expression for an A double dot angle N. On the other hand, if the second term in the parentheses was bigger than one, then I'm thinking of it as a V inverse or a one plus I or one plus J technically, one plus J or I could write it as a V inverse. And that, that expression is a VEP expression for an S angle N. And so normally what I would do is I'd say, well, the second, after in my third step, the remaining factor is a one plus R and so forth. And then I can identify it as either an A double dot angle in or an S angle in, depending on whether the R value was less than one or bigger than one. And even further, I could say what the J value would be. For instance, if it's an A double dot angle in, it's because the R value was less than one. So I'm thinking of it as a, as a, a discount factor with respect to J, or I'm thinking of that R value as a one over a one plus J. And so in order to get a J, I take the reciprocal of the R value and subtract one. So J would be a one over R minus one. If that R value was less than one, if the R value is greater than one, I'm just thinking of it as a one plus J itself. And so then the, the J value would be R minus one. Okay. I don't have that now though. If you look at the expression I have, the first term is not a one. The first term is actually what the common ratio is. So I've got something that looks more along the lines of an R plus an R squared and so forth at the very top there, the top expression. And so what I do now is I recognize, oh, that's a V, I, I can recognize that geometric sum as a VEP expression too. Also, I should say, if the R value was less than one, I'm thinking of it as a V, and I'd have a V plus V squared and so forth, that's an A angle N. On the other hand, if the, if the R value was greater than one, I'm thinking of it as a V inverse plus a V, v to the second power, or V to the minus one plus a V to the minus two and so forth, and that would be an, uh, an S double dot angle N. So I get the same sort of conclusion that I can make uh, if the expression in the parentheses is now an R plus an R squared and so forth, then I recognize that as either an A angle in or an S double dot angle in, depending on whether R is bigger than one or less than one. And then I could also get what interest rate I'm calculating that A or S double dot with respect to in terms of, of that R. Okay, so let's go back to our expression that we had in this problem. After step two, I'm at this point. Uh, I've worked my way to this point that I've got 70.49 equals a seven divided by 1.1 times this R plus R squared and so forth. So the question is, was that R value bigger than one or less than one? I, I, don't, I, I, I don't know because 1.1 divided by one, by one plus I is not numeric. I don't, I don't know whether that's bigger than one or less than one. So what I'll do is I think of the entire expression and I'd like to Question then, is the entire expression bigger than or, or less than or equal to 10 or bigger than or equal to 10? If it's less than or equal to 10, I'm going to use an, uh, an A. If it's greater than or equal to 10, I'll use an S double dot. In order to do that, I look at the number in front. It's 7.1. Well, se I'm sorry, 7 divided by 1.1. <laughs> 7 divided by 1.1 is about a 6.36. And so from that, I know I'm multiplying 6.36 by something to get 70.49, so that something that's in red has to be bigger than or equal to 10. So now, I've been, now I'm able to recognize that second factor as an S double dot angle 10. So I recognize it. I've got a 70.49 on the left side equals a seven divided by 1.1 times an S double dot angle 10 at rate J. I let the calculator do the work for me at this point. Use the TVM buttons on your calculator. You'll get a J value of a 0 0.018 number. That, uh, that J, the, the S double dot is with respect to J. 
uh, the one point, the R value of 1.1 divided by one plus I is, is bigger than one. I'm thinking of that as the one plus J value then. So then the, uh, um, uh, the J value would be that ratio minus one, and that ratio is a 1.1 divided by one plus I minus one. And again, I'm trying to solve for I here. Remember, don't lose sight of what you're trying to do. So once I got the J value that the calculator gave me, I think, well, that J value is R minus one because that R is bigger than one. So I subtract one to get the J value. And then uh, solve the resulting equation that it, it's in I, so, uh, solve, that, solve that equation for I. In other words, the point zero one eight five one. I'm gonna add one to it, take the reciprocal, multiply by 1.1, subtract one. It looks like that's what I would do. And I would get an I value of 0 0.08. Okay, that's by far gonna be the hardest one that you're gonna see on the exam. Uh, and again, you're not likely to see one this hard, but I wanted to give you this video to show you what it was going to, uh, what the solution is going to look like and how you could tweak the recognized part. The recognized part, normally I recognize the, the remaining factor after I factor out the first term as an A double dot or an S, but in this case, I had to tweak that and recognize it as either an A or an S double dot. And in, in particular, in this case, it was recognized as an S double dot angle 10. Okay, uh, it's a tough example, but it's a good example. I will see you in the next video.